So you lifted your truck, put bigger tires on it, it looks awesome. But now you can't beat your friend in a drag race the way you used to. Maybe you lost a few miles per gallon. The truck just feels sluggish and slow. Now, if you've experienced any of these symptoms, you're gonna wanna watch this video because today we're talking all about re-gearing. Don't go anywhere. Hey guys, Matt McAdam, AKA Desert Chief here with Driving Line. You're watching another episode of Chasing Dust and today's episode is gonna be all about re-gearing your vehicle after putting larger tires on it. You guys, before we go on, I wanna thank Nitto Tire for making Chasing Dust possible. As an avid off-roader, I definitely know what it takes to build a capable rig and have a successful trip both on and off the pavement. And that's why I run Ridge Grapplers on all three of my trucks. The Ranger, the Van, and the Toyota Pickup all got Ridge Grapplers on them. It's because it's simply my favorite tire. And you guys have heard me say that a few times on Chasing Dust before. So there's a great reason for that. I mean, they have amazing traction on the pavement, off the pavement, and just overall excel in any environment I put them through. So if you're looking for your new favorite tire, head over to their website at nittotire.com and check out the Ridge Grappler for yourself. Now, having built many trucks and SUVs and 4x4s over my years, I've definitely fell into the many pitfalls that come with actually modifying an off-road truck in that way. And the biggest one for me really being, after you change your tire size to a larger tire or an all-terrain tire or something that's a little bit bigger in diameter, you tend to lose a lot of power and MPG and you tend to lose some of the agility that your truck used to have when it was on stock wheels and tires. So today we're gonna to talk about re-gearing and how it's important when you're installing larger tires in your vehicles to re-gear your differentials to get some of that power back, get some of that MPG back, and to gain back some of that drivability and that close to stock feeling that you had before you put those tires on. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the basic components of a differential, what actually re-gearing means, some of the pros and cons of re-gearing your vehicle, and then whether or not you should re-gear your vehicle, and if so, what ratio, and I'll even give you guys a couple of tips if you're gonna be doing this to your truck or SUV, some things to look out for. All right, so let's begin with a couple of basics. First of all, what are the basic components that are inside your front and rear differentials? A gear set itself is actually made up of two parts. There's a pinion gear and a ring gear. You've probably seen images of these if you've been researching re-gearing. One of them looks like a big ring, that's your ring gear. The pinion kind of looks like a chicken drumstick kind of thing where it's got like a spiral gear on the end of it and it's kind of got a narrow shaft on the other side. Those are your basic components to a actual gear set and they actually mesh together. What else goes into a differential? You've got your axle shafts that come in from the left and right side wheels and tires, and then you've also got the carrier itself, which either is an open carrier or it houses some sort of a traction device. Now, a pinion gear is actually the input going into the differential from your drive shaft. So if we're talking about a rear differential, your rear drive shaft goes into your axle housing, and then it's actually right there connected to the pinion gear, and that gear spins in this fashion and that pinion gear is made it up to the ring gear which spins in this fashion and that's what actually spins your left and right tires. Now that pinion gear and the ring gear both have a set number of teeth on them. Now that gear ratio applies to both the front and rear differentials and you always want those two to match otherwise your front axle and your rear axle will be spinning at different rates and nobody wants that. So. When it comes to the basic components, that's really all there is to it. There's the ring gear, the pinion gear, and then the carrier and the axle shafts itself. But today we're gonna to be focusing mostly on the ring and pinion. So obviously every vehicle comes with a ring and pinion, whether it's rear wheel drive, you just have one set at the rear differential, or if it's a front, four wheel drive or all wheel drive, you have it at the front or the back. So every vehicle comes with a gear ratio, a stock gear ratio. For a lot of guys out there with Tacomas, Forerunners, Jeeps, that's usually about a 373 ratio, and that's written out as 3.73. Uh, I'll get into the specifics of what that means in a minute here. Re-gearing a vehicle, the actual, I guess, definition of re-gearing a vehicle is swapping out that ring and pinion for a different ring and pinion, usually an aftermarket option, that has a different ratio to it. So that requires actually disassembling the differential and then disassembling the ring gear and the pinion from the actual axle housing itself and installing new components. So now that you know what a gear ratio is and you know what a pinion and a ring gear is, how do those things 
play into each other. Basically, your pinion gear is going to spin at a certain rate coming out of your transmission because that's the rate that your transmission's gear ratio is spinning your drive shaft, thus spinning your pinion gear. And the ring gear is going to spin at a certain rate dependent on the final gear ratio of your rear differential. Now, if you have a 3.73 gear ratio like many stock vehicles have, what that actually means is a 3.73 to one. That's the actual ratio. It's always a to one. So if you have a 410, you have a 4.10 to one gear ratio. The meaning behind that one there means that for every one revolution of your tire, your drive shaft is spinning 3.73 times or 4.10 times or such as and so forth. Uh, gear ratios can get very, very low down to, you know, I've seen 6.0 gears on some desert pre-runners or even higher than that too. So if you've got a 3.73 gear ratio from the factory on your Tacoma, which most of them do, what that means is for every time your tire goes around one time, your drive shaft goes around 3.73 times. So let's say your stock tire is a 265-70-17 and you want to upgrade to a 285-70-17, which is basically going from a 32-inch tire to a 33-inch tire. It's a very common upgrade for a lot of Toyota trucks, so I'm going to use that as an example. On one hand, you have a 32-inch diameter tire. On the other hand, you have a 33-inch diameter tire. And you can probably guess that the 33 inch diameter tire has a longer rolling distance. So in order to get a full rotation out of a 33 inch tire, it is going to have to travel down the road farther than a 32 inch tire. So I put together a little demonstration to show you guys what that looks like. It's a little bit on the extreme side, but it's great for showing you exactly what that looks like in a visual way. All right, so what we got here is a 35 inch Nitto Ridge Grappler. And this is actually what's gonna be going on my camper van. And right behind it is a small tire off of a VW Beetle, and you can see that they both have tape lines at the bottom where they meet the ground. So that's just a, a marker there to show you as I rotate this in one full rotation, you can see exactly that it was one full rotation, so the tape line will match on the ground again. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna rotate each one of these tires one time by rolling it along my backyard, and as I do that, you'll see that the rolling distance of the 35 is much greater than the rolling distance of this smaller VW tire. So we're gonna start off here with the VW tire. I'm just gonna roll it until that tape line gets back down onto the ground. And right about there. Hopefully it will stay there. All right, so that's about right there where the VW tire ended up. And you can probably assume that the larger 35 inch Ridge Grappler is gonna go further than that. So let's see how much further it actually goes just to demonstrate this. We're gonna go ahead and roll this down until it gets down to the bottom again right about there. All right, so as you can see, the 35 inch tire went about two feet further than the VW tire. Now, that probably doesn't sound like a lot to you guys, but when you do this hundreds of times, thousands of times per minute, it actually makes a huge difference for how far you travel on a 35 inch tire versus a smaller tire like that. Of course, this is an extreme example because usually you're not gonna upgrade from a tire that small to a tire that big, but you get the gist of the demonstration. So now that you understand that a larger diameter tire will go a longer rolling distance than the smaller diameter tire, you'll understand that things like computers that are inside newer vehicles that calculate your fuel range or your odometer or any of the parameters that are calculated based on your wheel speed are gonna be thrown off as soon as you put a larger tire on it because the sensor is only reading how many times it's spinning at the axle, not how many times it's actually spinning on the tire on the ground. So if you have a larger tire on a newer vehicle that calculates your fuel range remaining fuel range or your odometer or your speedometer or any of those metrics, you can assume that if you put a larger tire on those vehicles without recalibrating those systems, those numbers are going to be off. Your speed is going to be a little bit higher than it actually reads on the gauge. You'll have better MPGs than it's actually showing you on the gauge. It's actually gonna give you a shorter fuel range than you can actually push your vehicle to before you run out of gas. And while re-gearing your vehicle isn't gonna recalibrate your system's computers to actually account for correct mileage or any of that, it is something to keep in mind when you're gonna be increasing your tire size is that those systems that you rely on, whether you're driving on the highway or off-road, are not gonna be correct or very accurate once you change the tires to a larger diameter. So now that you understand what rolling distance means and how it's affected by putting a bigger tire on your vehicle, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the benefits of re-gearing your truck. 
Now, when most people change the gears on their truck, they're going to be going to a lower ratio. And that's a little bit counterintuitive to think about because most people go from like a 3.73 stock gear to a 456. While the number itself seems higher, you have to remember it's a ratio. So 3.73 to 1 is actually a higher ratio than a 4.56 to 1 ratio, which is a lower ratio. So when we're talking about gears, it's kind of opposite. So if someone says they put a lower gear in their truck, what they really mean is the number itself increased, let's say from a 373 to a 456. Going from a stock gear ratio to a lower ratio, meaning like a 373 to a 410 or a 456 or a 488, will help you with a few things. When you put bigger tires on your vehicle, you're gonna notice that your acceleration time slows down. Regearing to like a lower ratio, like a from a 373 to a 410 or a 456, is going to help kind of bring that that rate at which you accelerate back to more of the stock feel. It's going to be a little bit faster. You'll see your RPM needle move up a little bit quicker. Now, obviously, having that power back is great, but another effect that you get from it, which is another great benefit of regearing, is that you'll notice that you will use less fuel just driving around town from stoplight to stoplight just getting up to you know a 30 40 mile an hour speed going through the first few gears in your transmission it's going to get there quicker with a little bit more ease and that means that you're going to be saving a little bit more fuel so that's why people re-gear to save fuel and perhaps the biggest benefit of re-gearing is if you use your truck off-road you know that especially for the crawler guys the jeep guys as you're trying to climb up an obstacle uh, when you put bigger tires and you don't re-gear and you have the stock gears in there it takes more input from you to be able to get up and over whatever obstacle you're trying to push the vehicle up and over um, it's going to take a little bit more power to get up there because you don't have that same torque because you have a larger tire uh, and a heavier tire even as well so when you re-gear and you make it easier for your motor to turn your tires you'll be able to get up and over obstacles or climb hills or go over rocks a little bit easier with a little bit less input from your motor, a little bit less uh, gas pedal to get up and over stuff. Um, just because the gear ratio you, you've changed in there is now making it more conducive for a larger size tire. Now with that said, there's also a couple of cons to re-gearing a truck as well. Because changing from a stock ratio, like let's say a 373 to like a 456, will change the revolutions of your drive shaft per single revolution of your tire. That means that when you're going about 70 miles an hour down the highway after you re-geared, you'll actually notice that your RPMs are gonna sit a little bit higher too. That actually translates over a long time, um, a lower highway MPG. So while you get your MPGs back in the city, you tend to lose a little bit on the highway if you do a lot of highway driving. So something to keep in mind before you re go re-gearing thinking that it's gonna solve all your, you know, your fuel efficiency problems, it's kind of half and half. If you're driving a lot in the city, it's gonna definitely help you a lot. If you're gonna be doing a mostly highway driving with it, it's not gonna be as great as you probably thought. Another con to re-gearing is sort of an obvious one, but it's expensive. If you can live with the way your vehicle drives, maybe you don't need to re-gear and you can save some of that money because it can cost anywhere from about 1500 bucks to I've seen over $3,000 depending on the gear sets you do and who's doing the labor. If you have an IFS front vehicle like a Toyota or a Chevy or the newer Fords, uh, you are gonna be spending a little bit more money than the Jeep crowd who's got a solid axle front differential. Those are a little bit easier to uh, swap gears out of because of just the way that the diff cover comes off and the carrier comes out So something to keep in mind is just the, the actual cost of re-gearing can be a con for some people But you always want to keep in mind that Vehicle manufacturers per, put certain gear ratios in their vehicles from the factory Because they were meant to work with the size of the tire that came on the vehicle. So if you look at some of the newer uh, Off-road vehicles that are being offered right now um, They actually have different gear ratios you can order them with. You see this a lot with Jeeps uh, in the Wrangler, JL, JK even. Uh, when you get a Rubicon that comes with a 33 inch tire, it's a little bit bigger than the smaller trim levels like the Sahara and the Sport. They come with a 410 gear ratio stock from the factory. Uh, whereas the other models of the Wrangler came with a 3.73 gear ratio. The same goes for the new Bronco. If you've looked at some of the order forms for those, um, the, the V6 versions that have the 35 inch tires in the factory, basically their Sasquatch package, uh, they do offer them with, I believe it's a 456 gear ratio if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong about that, but the uh, lower trim models do have a higher gear ratio like a 373 or a 410. So these are some things to keep in mind is that OE manufacturers are building these vehicles specifically for the tire sizes that they come with. Um, so if you're gonna increase the size of your tire, 
and you really want to keep the engineering correct and have the vehicle work the way it was intended to, you really want to think about re-gearing so that you can actually have it be working the way that they intended it to work. So let's say you've determined that you definitely want to re-gear your truck. Now, how do you figure out what gear ratio to run? That's another big question that a lot of people ask me is, hey, I want to put 35s on my truck, I want to put 33s on my Tacoma, what gear ratio would you put in it? And when you're trying to determine the correct gear ratio for the size of the tires you have on your vehicle, you have to take a very mathematical approach. Uh, you know, it, it has to make sense for the tires that you have calculated based on the model of your transmission and the gear ratios in each gear of your transmission, as well as each gear of your transfer case, and then your final drive ratio, it all of that comes into play. And I know that sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo because it honestly really is. I mean, for instance, a 10 speed transmission, like the one that's in my Ford Ranger has 10 different ratios in it. And then the transfer case has a high ratio and a low ratio. And then you have the final rear end ratio, which determines what the final drive ratio of your truck is. And, and that's just a lot of math. I'm going to put a link in the description to a web Website called grimjeeper.com and they have a gear calculator on that website that's fantastic I've been using it for about 10 years to calculate the best gear ratios for my vehicles when I want to go ahead and re-gear them uh, this website is fantastic because it has a drop-down list for all the different models of transmissions all the different models of transfer cases you can input your own tire size whether it's p metric or you can use a standard tire size like a 35 12 50 17 uh, and you can input the gear ratios and you can actually compare one scenario to the next and you'll be able to see the exact differences in speed and rpm between two different setups and then you can make a very educated guess of what your best gear ratio is based on a very mathematical approach to it. So look in the description below for grimjeeper.com. That's a great resource. You guys should have that saved on your favorites tab because if you ever need to figure out something when it comes to drivetrain, that website is fantastic. Someone did all the hard work ahead of it for you. I really hope this video gave you a little bit more confidence and make, lets you make a more informed decision about the drivetrain on your truck or SUV. If you guys have any questions about this stuff, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. I'm happy to answer and see if I can help you guys out. Obviously, everyone's situation and scenario is gonna be a little bit different, but if you apply the basics that I went over in this video, it should give you a lot of help. So please let me know if you guys have any other questions. But that's gonna do it for me, you guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Please like subscribe, share this video with your friends. This has been Matt McAdam, AKA Desert Chief, only on driving lines chasing dust. I'll catch you guys on the next one.